Welcome to the Late Night Race Review. Lando fluffs the start but eases the victory with a Max Verstappen style win. Ferrari shock everyone by doing well for once. And Williams are brought in front of the board to decide if they're too much bored is making us bored. Ugh, it's Zandvoort. Don't forget to support the podcast by hitting those like, follow and subscribe buttons. Welcome back to the Late Night Race Review. I'm Owen Scott and with me as always is Dave Jericho and the Danish destroyer Isidro Kontelvish. And in a weekend where Williams making us feel bored had a completely different meaning and the Russian government got themselves two new F1 cars, Lando took the win after a brief little scare, but it was never really in doubt. A, an emphatic win, Dave, in the end. Yeah, I mean, that's pre- like that's pretty much all we have to say about this race, <laughs> isn't it? But it was, uh, yeah, Jesus Christ, uh, McLaren really... Uh, Ram their car down uh, Red Bull's throats on uh, on this occasion, right on their uh, their home track as well, which for um, or not on their home track, but on Verstappen's home track, hmm. um, properly pulled his pants down and gave him a spanking on the the start finish straight. Um, the, it, Oscar Piastri, on the other hand, having more trouble than uh, than Lando trying to get by people. He was stuck. He seemed to be stuck behind uh, Leclerc, uh, Isidro, for quite a long time and just couldn't get past. Yeah, I think he, uh, he had a few issues throughout race, but even with those issues, uh, he was just up there trying to help uh, Norris, at least in the beginning, as he was trying to make time being uh, a cork so Norris could get enough time on the lead. Mm. But overall, I think Norris, uh, Yastri, was also doing great this weekend did yeah. very well considering everything very clearly dave now the mclaren is by far the fastest uh, fastest car in the grid isn't it apparently they brought an upgrade this weekend that was they reckoned was going to be worth 30 percent more on top of the upgrade that they brought in miami Jesus. so i mean that would show where that pace has suddenly come from and um, mm. because there was no I know Red Bull are going a little bit backwards or maybe not backwards, but maybe just getting a little bit kind of stagnant or something like that in their uh, in their development. But, I mean, 20, 21 seconds is colossal. Like, I mean, like, like you can't, like, what are you going to, what are you chalking that up to? Tire wear, like, you know, like, you know, car ballad, like 21 seconds is clearly that car is better than your car. And that's the end of it. Like, there is no other reason for that. Do we feel, Dave, that Lando was so confident about the pace of his car that he chose to just chill on the start uh, on the start line and let uh, let Verstappen get himself a little lead and then absolutely destroy him? Yeah, I just gave the home fans a little something, something like you know, just like <laughs> yeah, you go there, get get a little cheer going into turn one, and and then I'll absolutely decimate you for the rest of the race. I, I don't know about you, but I always feel that Lando, there's always something there in the back of my head that something is going to go wrong somewhere that he's not going to get it. Because you're thinking of Russia when he had the chance to come yeah. in for the pits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Embedded in my in my head for some reason. Um, but yeah, win it he did and emphatically win it he did. This sets us up nicely now for, for the rest of the season. Dave, do you have the, the, um, the drivers and the championship points or the drivers and the constructors points? I do, and I was actually kind of calculating this before we came on here, actually, but, but just just for this occasion. But anyway, they have been updated. So obviously, Verstappen's still out in the lead on 20, uh, 295 points and Lando in second on 225. Mm. But now, get on to the constructors in a second. Nine races left of the season, right? So that's 70 points of, of a gap. If both of those drivers were to finish every, every race, the, the next nine races... It would have to finish one two for Lando to Verstappen, and Lando would have to get the fastest lap as well to win by seventy two points. So that would be the difference if if both te- if both drivers finish first and second. So if Lando finished first and Verstappen finished second for the last nine races, and yeah. Lando gets the fastest lap for those nine races as well, there'll be a seventy two. That'd be seventy two point margin. Which oh, means right. Lando would win the world championship by two points. 
Oh, by two points. Okay, I yeah, see what yeah, you mean. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the, that would be the difference. Wow. Um, you know, the total difference over. So there's, at the moment, the difference is 70 points. But over the nine next nine races, that um, margin, uh, that, that gain, should I say, by Lando, if he was to do that, would be 72. So it would give him the driver's title by two points. And not discounting the fact that, you know, th- this Red Bull has not been too consistent throughout the season. There could be something with brakes. There could be something that will go wrong that will cause Max to, to even DNF. Yeah, I don't think. And it's not outside of the realm's possibility that Max kind of, you know, finishes third, you know, Piastri coming second. You know, I think Piastri had a shocker today. Like, I, I, I'll be honest, mm. like. What happened know, there? I don't know. I don't. I think that's maybe a bit of the rookie, you know, his first season sort of thing. Um, I, 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 I just, I just don't think. Or sorry, the, the rookie level of, of driver in him. Like, I just don't think um, a more experienced driver would have stayed, been stuck behind Leclerc as long as he was. I think that car is much faster. The car, the tires were fine. He just, I don't know, he just wasn't kind of making the moves in the right positions. Now, you could also say credit to Leclerc for holding him off as well, like in a Ferrari that we thought was going to be dog shit this weekend Mm -hmm. and it turned out to be, you know, the thorn in Piastri's side. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Cedro. Yeah, go on, Cedro, go on. Um, Just I don't forget that McLaren is fast, but when it's fast in clean air, but behind other cars, he struggles a little bit, so I can imagine that being behind Leclerc all the time doesn't help the McLaren. Yeah, Astri did, decide, but Norris we... just streamed past Verstappen like there was. It was like, it's, yeah, thanks, see it. <laughs> is the McLaren the 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 RV nineteen with the papaya library? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. Um, Max, yeah, I, I would imagine he's feeling somewhat frustrated with the current situation, uh, Isidro. It's like, is there any way of turning this around um, for Verstappen? They seem to be in a, in a, although they're finishing second and first up around the top, but it seems to be somewhat of a downward spiral for Max and, and Red Bull at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I think Max can do much else rather than just try to finish as up as possible. Mm-hmm. But we saw this race that he is, was uh, in a different state of mind that Norris, when was overtaking, we could see Max just didn't, wasn't playing dirty. He just said, yeah, just go ahead. You could just make a, a move or something, but just he just realized that that McLaren was coming and going and there's nothing he can do. Yeah. Yeah, he, he gave in in the end. Um, and l- like his teammate, uh, Checo Perez starting uh, way back. Where was he? Sixth? Fifth? Sixth? And then also, Finished no, he started in fifth. <laughs> Ended up in sixth. <laughs> this story, Dave, uh, I mean, it it has to end at some point, doesn't it really? This, this has gone on too long now. I was actually hoping, like, I like Perez, but I was hoping he'd finish a lot worse. Well, you wouldn't actually know I like Perez, given how much he did <laughs> exactly. over this season. But um, I really hoped he was fucking, oh, yeah, and then following what I'm about to say, I really <laughs> hoped he was going to DNF or, you know, just do, make a mistake. Just because uh, Natalie Pinkham asked um, uh, Christian Horner at the, I think it was during qualifying, I think, or after qualifying. Um, that basically no one thought that we'd be seeing Perez after the the summer break, and he got really stroppy and like real snarky and defensive, kind of going, well, "Look, who else would you put in the car? Who would you put in the car?" And she's like, "Well, that's for you to decide." Like, you know, and he's like, "No, no, I'm asking you. Who would you put in the car?" And you're like, I "Have a fucking day off. I don't know. Maybe someone better than Sergio fucking Perez. Like, you know, like fucking use your brain." <laughs> so I was kind of after those comments, I was like, "I hope he just fucking smashes it in turn one, or better yet, wipes out Verstappen as well." Like, I was just like, "That'd be just." Poetic justice, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, n- no one really liked Christian Horner before all of the the scandal stuff <laughs> kicked off. Yeah, but I mean, he's he's really digging in on that now, and I, you know, I, I don't think anyone wants to see uh, see that team. I don't think even Red Bull fans are happy enough to see them fail now this year. They're a bit of a toxic team, aren't they? At the moment, they are, like yeah. just the the whole thing that's going on internally, the driver situation, just 
development not going well. Adrian Newey leaving. Helen yeah. Marco's an absolute bell end. Christian Horner's taking out his bell end. It's just got <laughs> fucking, you know, it's just an absolute toxic environment, I think. Yeah. Bunch of ding dongs. Bunch of ding dongs. Um, okay, let's move away from, from Red Bull because there's nothing but but negativity, even though Verstappen came second. Um, Ferrari, like a, a decent a decent weekend for Ferrari. This is a good start to the the, the, the second half of the season. Leclerc finishing third and uh, Sainz finishing fifth. Isidro Leclerc battled really hard today, but he you know he got on the podium, which was a bit surprising, wasn't it? I think everyone in Ferrari was surprised to see. <laughs> Someone finishing in the in the in the podium, but I uh, I think the Leclerc did very well this weekend. Mm. I wasn't expecting Ferrari to be this good. Let's say, considering it's Ferrari, a P three and P five is very good. I was expecting that Monza next weekend they would show up a better performance. Mm. And I think, considering what we saw today, I'll be surprised if they don't repeat or making better since they are playing at home. But yeah. this weekend, Leclerc was was very good. That podium he truly deserves. I mean, or I know we're talking about Piastri not being overtake, not being able to overtake uh, Leclerc. But I think uh, Leclerc deserves credit for that, and the car was also up there where they wanted. Yeah, I mean, it's a super result. Considering that Leclerc started a P six, and. Uh, Science started back in P10. Like, that's a solid weekend for Ferrari. That's something to look forward to for next week now. Given that they had shit qualifying pace and sort of free practice pace, I thought they were going to be behind Mercedes even. Like, I didn't think they were even going to be that far up. And the fact that they were able to hold off a um, the, 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 the McLaren, like, um, and... Also, then, you know, you've got uh, signs, like you say, coming from 10th up to 5th. I mean, that's... Oh, no, where did he finish? Signs saying 6th, was it? No, I no 5th. Right. You're right, fifth. It was 5th. Yeah, yeah, I was right. Um, so, I mean, that's... Yeah, didn't ex- I didn't see it coming. But like uh, like Azidra said, I don't think anybody saw that coming. So, uh, Mercedes, yeah, dog shit today. Absolute dog shit. Uh, where did this come from? Because they were, like, they were looking good the last few races. Spa, they... You know, the one and two pretty much apart from, you know, the whole uh, fuel thing. But seven and eight, is this track specific, Isidro, do you think? Or, or was this uh, is this where they actually are? I, I couldn't imagine that it's going to be tra- track specific because they, they've they been doing very well, as you as you said. And today, actually, I, I was surprised how bad they are and surprised how Ferrari was this weekend. So... Mm. Uh, we, we we both got surprised. Ferrari was good and Mercedes was shite. I mean, P7 and P8, considering they had podiums in the past few in a few races. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's probably just track specific. It was quite windy as well today. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure that didn't help. That was something that Lando was mentioning uh, at the start of the race, wasn't it? That he was saying that he, he felt that his, his braking was quite long or something, but it turned out to be the fact that there was just so much wind around the track. Or in a specific corner, was it turn ten? Was it? I think so. <laughs> I, I don't know. The specific, no, he did, but... yeah. In fact, um, like, but I mean, there's, uh, yeah, I thought the Mercedes were going to be ahead of Ferrari this weekend, um, mm. like across the board. But I think the, yeah, I think the 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 risk that they made with George Russell. And pitting them for the soft compound tires, I think, was just a big mistake. Like, mm. uh, like even if they had lost the place to to, to signs, you could still probably have held off the the place to Perez, and then, but instead, you ended up finishing behind both of them on tires that were basically just kind of had gone off by about maybe what five laps from the end or something like that. I think they stopped kind of uh-huh. gaining. So yeah, I don't know. think think that was a bad call. Uh, Lewis Hamilton made no difference because he wasn't making any ground and he was he had a free pit stop anyway so it was worth the gamble for him for George Russell I thought it was uh, was a bit too much of a gamble and yeah it didn't pay off for them ultimately Hamilton doing somewhat all right though didn't he he started way back in was it P15 or something no P14 and ended up P uh P8 I mean that's not that's not a bad little race for for Hamilton there. I didn't I and this is the thing I didn't even notice in qualifying that he'd finished so far back. That that eluded me there. 
Yeah, he went out in Q2, didn't he? And uh, he was penalised. Three place grid prep penalty for a oh. Perez. Right. Okay. But okay. He just, he just, yeah, he just made a mess of his kind of his final laps, like. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Was it a good race? Six, six places in a Mercedes that you know had has won a couple of races this year. I don't know. Mm. I kind of expected more from them. Like, uh, I definitely expected them maybe kind of chat. Well, certainly sort of challenging again, the likes of Perez, Sainz, Leclerc, maybe I suppose like Piastri being behind Leclerc was a bit of a surprise as well. So yeah, I don't know. I think I expected a lot more from Mercedes. I think that's car is uh, still a little bit of an unknown quantity that they can come out in one race, win or win it. And then another race like that, they're seventh and eighth. Um, and you were saying like Lewis Hamilton going from 14th to 8th is a good result where you're kind of like, geez, he should have breezed through those on soft tires at the start. If that car was as quick as we thought it was when they were winning races, he should have been breezing up through the, the pack. Um, but he didn't. And he, I think that's as well. He's a bit maybe didn't want to gamble it in the opening laps when there was just so much activity going on. He kind of just sends, tends to sit back and let things settle down and then tries to pick them off. Mm. But I'd be honest, I think he needs to get a little bit ballsy and just kind of go at, on, on the lap one, lap two and try and uh, gain those places back. Just yeah, aggressive. Didn't really, didn't really work for them. I mean, he's considering got, that he's leaving Mercedes, so... He's got nothing to lose, really, does he? Yeah, just, just wreck bomb the that thing, thing around. <laughs> yeah. Take Perez out. Yeah. Um what was I day now um truth be told I did I did briefly fall asleep in the middle of this but was I daydreaming or was Pierre Gasly having a driver of the day kind of drive today? I heard I heard him kind of come up in my mid hazy daydream a few times and the oh, commentators You have him in your predictions as a as a top 10 finish because <laughs> No, no, no. I I just he seemed to pop up in the in the commentary quite a lot and there was uh, there was a lot of talk of him um in in a few uh, little back and forths, but I I don't remember him too much. But he, he seems to have had a, a decent race, considering the fact that he's driving an Alpine, Dave. Um, P nine. Did he finish P nine? Jeez, that yeah. shows you how much I was fucking paying attention to outside of the <laughs> sort of the top four teams. Like, yeah, he did P nine. Oh yeah, yeah, because I was kind of ho- hoping that uh, Albon could hold on with those fucking shitty hard compound tires, and then he ended up getting absolutely fucking swamped by everybody. His, um, his shitty compound tires and the big massive plank of wood that they put underneath this yeah, car. Dave, eight give foot me wide. Give me, give me the the breakdown. Do you know? Do you understand what happened here and why why he was penalised? What is what is the crack with this thing? It was like 0.3 of a millimeter or something like that. The floor was wider than it was than regulations. Too wide. So we're right. basically going down to uh, that when I was saying just before we sat recording the the speeding in the pit lane where it was like 0.5 of a kilometer. Like that's the margins. You're, like I mean, you're like fuck me. 0.5 of a kilometer. Who even notices that other than you know? micro fucking uh monitoring of everything um yeah. uh 0.3 of a millimeter um i, I i'll be honest i'd love to know like, well i suppose I, that in itself isn't going to be an advantage i think the point is if you are putting 0.3 of a millimeter everywhere there's probably an advantage to gain like so i suppose they have to chop it off somewhere but all they did was basically pare it down they didn't change the floor and like that they just pared it down and raced the same floor Crazy, absolutely crazy. What, what what sort of advantage would that give? Uh, well, do you know? Depends. Like the aero, like, well, on the floor, I don't know. Well, the, I, the floor was just manufacturing issue. Like, yeah, it was just, mm-hmm. I'd say when they were manufacturing it, it just, you know, calibration or whatever was out on whatever they were fucking doing. So that just happened. Or it wasn't an intentional thing. But mm-hmm. if you were doing that around the car strategically, like I said, if you were, if you were, you'd be gaining aero you know, over multiple parts um, and you might gain yourself a a tenth maybe if you were able to spread that around the car. But Mm. like I said, just on the floor, it's doing fucking nothing for you. Like it's just regulations to prevent you from going over and and doing it, uh, you know, on on other components all at the same time. So, Mm. um, but yeah, they they just shaved it down and raced the same car. So, um, well, at least they had that car to race. They didn't have much option given that fucking <laughs> Logan Sargent decided to set his on fire. <laughs> um, and yeah, shaving bits off their car. Uh, uh, Has have uh, shaved a whole car off of their whole two cars off of their um, 
their inventory. Uh, has this been the, the, the um, is it Urakali? Um, there was court proceedings and they were told that they'd have to leave their two cars in the Netherlands and they wouldn't be able to bring them to Monza. Did you hear I about didn't this? See this? What was that? No, I missed all this. Yeah, so Haas um, were told and the court proceedings were brought up in the Netherlands um, and there, I don't know if there has been a result. I'll have to just have a quick little check now. Um, they were told basically that they were, uh, they owed this U- Urukali or Urukai, whatever the, the sponsor was from Russia, um, a certain amount of money and that the courts in the Netherlands were going to seize both of their cars and they're, they're not allowed to bring their cars out of the Netherlands until this fee has been paid. No. How does that work, given that there's sanctions placed on doing business with Russian companies? That yeah. if you pay that sponsorship, now you're being seen as doing business with a Russian company. So why would the international courts, or or it, was, it wasn't international courts, it was just courts in the Netherlands, was it? The courts in the Netherlands, yeah. yeah they I went mean, into the Netherlands to try and get them back. Yeah, who gives a fuck, like, you know, like... Do you yeah. know, like, it's like, what are you going to do? Like, the sanctions against every Russian com- co- company uh, around the world, like, you know, d- uh, and no one's supposed to be doing business with them. So paying them the balance of a sponsorship deal or, or well, I don't know what they're paying them back because they're, they're obviously having to pay them back after cutting ties. I assume mm-hmm. that's what that is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really strange little situation. I can't seem to find any any update on it, but they were saying it's um, a real story. Owen, <laughs> it is. Go go look it up. It was all over um, all over F one there there yesterday. It was said that um, while it was decided that Haas's participation in the Dutch Grand Prix may go on as usual, the team has been informed that it would not be permitted to transfer its cars and equipment from the country after the event unless the remaining payment has been fulfilled. Um, Haas stated. Yeah, in a statement that it was currently working with Urukali to finish the financial transfer and that any payments must properly comply with restrictions imposed on several Russian firms. So, yeah, I'm not sure what the outcome of that is, but it's possible that, you know, Haas have to leave their cars in Netherlands and the two lads will be on foot in uh, in Monza. In yeah. office chairs and <laughs> WD-40 on the wheels. <laughs> Although it might make them a little bit faster, in fairness. Maybe, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, there you go. Hire um, Gunther in to, to push them off the, the start line. <laughs> yeah, he's probably delighted <laughs> sitting at yeah. home laughing. <laughs> it was probably him that, that filed the proceedings. Um, yeah, fucking train wreck. Uh, anything else to um, talk about here, Dave? Uh, Hulkenberg, I, I guess, finishing quite high up. He got 11, but no points. So, you know, suck a dick. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest. There's some great overtakes and stuff like that further down the pack, but largely, I'll be honest, after... The first, the opening kind of laps, um, once sort of Lando took the position, the bit of a battle between Perez and uh, and Sainz, um, like Piastri stuck behind fucking Leclerc. Mm. I mean, outside of that, there was it was just clock watching, wasn't it? It was just really? waiting to see whether you know the times were going down. Was Russell catching Perez? Was you know Hamilton catching Russell? Uh, and all you're doing is clock watching and uh, largely. Just absolute fucking uh, nothing happened outside of that, really. Like, you know, so we came back from the summer break. We got a good result from McLaren. Perez is still there. And uh, we roll on to, to what, Monza, Monza. Isn't it next, is it? Um, so, Dave, do you want to go driver of the day? Driver of the day. Do you know, I, I'm i going to give it to Lando, just purely over the dominance of the... It wasn't because he finished first, but purely over that 20... 21 seconds um, I'm going to give it to, to him but I could easily have been swayed to give it to Charles Leclerc for keeping Oscar Piastri behind in that other McLaren but mm. I'll put my fucking uh, nail my colours to the mast it's Lando I'm going with driver of the day yeah likewise if it was Verstappen that had finished 20 seconds ahead I don't think anyone would be uh, lobbying for driver of the day uh, but because it's Lando, I think, yeah, you got to give it to him. Leclerc, yeah. though, as you say, is an honourable mention there. But Lando, yeah, 20 seconds. Boss. Who are you going with zero? Uh, same here. Lando Norris. He had a bad start, but he had the the nerves and the car to just wait for the right moment. Mm. And then yeah. get the 20 seconds. Yeah. That McLaren RB19 is something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Loser of the day. I got two here. Like, like again, I could either go with Piastri um, 
but I think that's more of his own making. So I'd probably give it to George Russell um, because I think he should have finished a little higher up. And I think the position that he ended up in was a combination of, well, the car being hard on the tires and then the decision to maybe pit him for softs, but too early um, and basically just ran out of them. So he had no chance of even catching Perez. So I don't, I don't outside of that, I don't really see anybody as a major loser of the day out of uh, out of this race. Yeah, there was there was no there's no real moments that stick out where you can kind of pick that out really, is there? No. Um yeah, I don't know. George, George Russell, I guess. I, I could go for Sergio Perez. I I I'm starting to feel a little bit sorry for him, but I, I again, <laughs> it's all his own doing. Yeah. He's not doing himself any favors. He's not grabbing the bull by the horns. Um <laughs> so yeah, like my pun. Uh, so yeah, George Russell. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? I don't know. Yeah. Is he drunk, well, are you going with I would that? go with the Williams team. They had bad luck crashing the car, then bad luck with Albon qualifying. And that wasn't this... bad luck. That was Logan, called Logan Sargent. <laughs> 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 yeah, call him by the name, not call him bad luck. <laughs> and today they, even though Albon started from the from the back, he was on the P11, and then he finished back on the. B fifteen or B sixteen, yeah. You know, I'd I'd have agreed with that only for it's all been their own making, like the like everything that happened, like the speed in the pit lane, the crash from Logan Sargent, the the larger uh, floor on the car. They didn't like, speed on the pit lane. That was uh, that was it during free practice. So that's what I'm saying when they got when Sargent got the, the fine of for going oh. 0.5 of a kilometer over the speed limit <laughs> got his 100 euro fine <laughs> but so that's what I'm saying like everything from free practice one through to the end of the race was largely due to their own of their the own losers. making whereas George Russell I don't think that result was of his own making I think that was a team decision unless he came on the radio saying I want to come in and pit then in which case then <laughs> it's his fault but we haven't heard that or I haven't heard that so I uh, I don't know what are you thinking are you're on the fence can, can oh, I just suggest one more uh, loser of the day oh, yeah. can I say Carla Sainz um, having to look back at that Williams team at what's happening and then oh. no knowing you're going there next year holy shit but I think though the thing is I don't I think next year Williams will still be pretty dog shit. I think it's 2026 is where maybe there's a potential. Like they're, they're targeting podiums for 2026. Like it's not a you can target it all you fucking want, but I mean, but I don't think it's. I think they're they're not <laughs> I, looking at it like oh we're hoping for that. I think they're thinking they've got a plan and an actual car that's going to be back challenging up at the top end of the the grid again, and that's why they, they they've been putting very little funding into what's going on at the moment. Hence, well, Logan Sargent costing them <laughs> a fortune, which has taken up their development budget. But uh, other than that, I don't know. I, I I think, yeah, next year, I don't think it's going to be great. I think 2026, though, I, I, I don't know. I'd like to see them back up the end, although Frank obviously not there anymore and Claire's left as well. So it's like it's just Williams by name, really. Like it's out yeah. of the family now. So, um, so, yeah, maybe it's, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Um, is there is there a dick of the day? Horner, maybe, for that, that Natvap's uh, comment? Yeah, I go Christian Horner just because, you know. Such a dick. Yeah. <laughs> no one else to pin it on, so no. we might as well give it to him. Just yeah. a random dick of the day is this one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just well, pick. Horner is always a dick, so. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, pick, pick a dick. You have to just pick someone randomly out of the crowd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. some just some pedestrian just watching the yeah, race, like you. Yeah. Um, get after traveling over. All right, will we go uh, predictions yeah. game time. All right, let's see. Right, yeah. So that wraps up uh, a rather speedy uh, review of the <laughs> Netherlands Grand Prix. Um, all right, so the predictions. Uh, let's have a quick recap of the table. I am way down the bottom, still on 15. Isidro in second with 22, and Owen out front on 24. It's all about the change. Yeah. Okay, so let me uh, open up. Where the fuck is this gone? All right. Okay. Race results. And where is the predictions? Okay, so... I went with Lando Norris P1. 
Fucking yep. twice. Yep. I went with Verstappen P2. <laughs> yep. Fuck Very twice. good. Now, Hamilton P3. I mean, come on. No one saw that coming, really. Like, I mean, let's mm. be honest. So, but it's a goose egg zero for that one. It, it could have been, though, in fairness. Um, yeah. <sighs> miss, miss, miss for me. Now, Verstappen P1, Norris P2, Piastri P3. Nothing happening there. Bad. That's the first really bad week I've had now. What did you go with there, Isidro? Yeah, Verstappen first, now second, Hamilton third. Oh. All round, gentlemen. Ooh. Not good. Not good. All right. So my flop, I went with Ocon outside the top 10. And you did. Brucey bonus for that. Jesus, Dave, you're doing well this week. Yeah, um, I'm I, smashing it. I went for Ricardo outside the top 10, and that happened, thankfully. That was Just one thing. Out, only by yeah. two. It's close. Uh, yeah. And as I went that also outside top ten. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, uh, not looking good. No. <laughs> no. Um, no my season. surprise was Albon top ten. Now, only for the way they had to start, he had to start at the back. Like I would be, um, with that they they had a quick car. So, mm. but anyway, didn't make any difference. I still got zero points. So. Yeah, uh, I went for I went for Sonoda inside the top ten, and <laughs> Jesus, I mean, Jesus, terrible, terrible. Yeah, that was just. Do you know everybody that kind of finished outside the top ten? I mean, Hulkenberg, like, I did did, did any? Well, Ga, Joe Gasly is the biggest surprise for me there, getting ninth. Yeah, but yeah. who so, who is the person? Oh, maybe Stroll is the only kind of top tenny type car that finished out, outside the top ten. Really, that's what allowed Gasly in there. And but they, but me. none of them looked like they were going to get in the top ten. Like if you had any of those, you'd be like, "Oh, I'm fucked here." Like you know. So it just that that but, bottom ten there has kind of consistently been that bottom ten throughout the year, hasn't it? Really. Yeah. It's so like those guys at the bottom, they're really scrapping it out this year for yeah. for the bottom five uh, car or positions. Yeah, big time. Horrible. Yeah. All right, Zedro. Oh, I mean, wrap it up. <laughs> wrap <laughs> it up. Let's let's clean sheet, off. buddy. Stroll top ten, inside top ten. Yeah, Absolute disappointment all around. Clean sweep of zeros. <laughs> that is beautiful. Ouch. All right, let's have a recap here. Scroll up to the L ta- table L's. Oh, nice. Okay, that's not too bad. Scotty, that's not too bad. Scotty's still on top on twenty-five. Zero still in second on twenty-two. But I'm fucking catching up with eighteen points. Yeah. Yes, you are. All you right. came like a wrecking ball, Dave. Yeah, came in like a. <laughs> I did indeed. All right, so all right, it's not email the next one we're talking about. Monza. Um, sorry, it is um, Monza. Sorry, Jesus Christ. All right, let me say, a professional person would have had this all prepared. Um, all right, and oh, thank you, Scotty. No problem, man. Um, all right, all right. Top three. I am going with. Lando. And I am going with uh, Piastri. And then... (laughs) Here's the interesting one. (laughs) Here is the interesting one, because I think realistically it's going to have to be Verstappen. I mean, I just... Yeah, I mean, it's it's not within the reality of Ferrari that they will shit the bed at a home race, you know? So it's happened Mm. before it'll happen again. I think they're the fastest cars and the fastest drivers at the moment in that order. Mm. So I think I'm going with that on a track that's going to be fast. Okay. Uh, I am going to say uh, Lando Piastri, obviously are the top two. That's become our new Verstappen P1. Um, And then P3. uh, I'm going to say that this track was an anomaly for Mercedes. I'm going to go for George Russell P3 just to mix shit up. Yeah, I can use that extra point. Go on. uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm going with the Norris P1, Verstappen P2, and Leclerc P3. All right, Lando, Verstappen, and Leclerc. Ooh. That's an interesting top three. Yeah, Ferrari is playing home, so I think they're gonna push for a podium. Nice. Look at the look at turncoat fucking uh, Isidro jumping on the bandwagon. (laughs) I'm just going back there to as far back as British, Austrian, all season, 
All season, he's had nobody but Verstappen. Yeah, Max, 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 Verstappen, 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 Max, Max, Verstappen, Verstappen, Verstappen. <laughs> and now, yeah, oh, now he wins. The man wins again. And now his hero's <laughs> jumping ship. He's, he's dropped you his golden what, boy. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? Max going to finish first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one time that you Likely. <laughs> Yeah. All right. My uh, flop will be. Um, Oh, well, I mean, it is clearly going to be Gasly outside the top 10. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, Scotty, who you got? uh, I'm going to say just for the crack, Perez DNF, just for the fun of it. Perez DNF. Well, you got a couple of points there to play with. Are you going to throw an old fucking guess as whether it's a crash or a... Uh, No, I'm I'm just going to say DNF. I mean, you have the luxury there. You're like fucking, uh, like fucking Bill Gates there with his money that you can, you know, you can buy the yacht if you want. It's not going to make a dent, like you know. Well, if I if I say exactly things. what it is and he just DNFs, do I still get a point? No, no. Well, then no, no, thank you. Yeah, but you've got you've got plenty of points. To no, play. thank you. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, but you you're trying to be ballsy there with Perez mixing it up a bit. I'm just trying to fucking let you go fucking out in the blaze of glory. It's still ballsy. All right, Isidro, who are you going with? I'm going to go with uh, Alonso outside top 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's uh, fair. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm just going to quickly throw mine in there. Albon, top 10 finish. <laughs> um, Yeah, I'm going to go Stroll, top 10 finish. Um, oh, wait. Oh, so you didn't have much time to think about this one. That came out in quick fire. <laughs> Gasly P8. Oh, Gasly P8 on Monza. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have yeah. it. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's already, I'm, I'm locking Don't it say in anything. already. <laughs> uh, all right, wow. Dave. All right, that's uh, that's good to know, Isidro. Thank you. Um, geez, I could fucking I could uh, overtake Isidro next week. Let's let's do it, Dave. Let's do it. He too. He too is in the future. Um, right, everybody, that's uh, wrapping up the Netherlands Grand Prix and our first podcast after the summer break. Nice snappy one that we will uh, possibly maybe continue this little format. Nice little condensed fucking wrap it up in 40 minutes and get out yeah, the door. Like um, that. And we will be back in, uh, what, one week's time next week for the Monza Grand Prix? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that right? Yep. Right, everybody. Well, until next week, we shall see you then. 